say that we all have the option to decide whether we want to wear America right now. If you decide to go just go and get into the plane, this elephant will be empty. When the few restaurants maybe you will stay here for some reasons. You can't so you can't be a little American and be a little Nigerian, a little Nigerian, a little Ghanaian. Then you become an embodiment of contradiction. Then you go by it. You're not Nigerian, you're not Ghanaian, you're not Nigerian, you're not American. Who are you? So because of that concept that we have, that mindset that we have, is different. Some of us are having the thought, yes, as soon as I get some money, the way this country looks, I'm going to build a house in Canada. I'm going to buy a house in Nigeria. At least, anything happens, I will run there with my family. No! This is my period. This is all you have. So in our hope, I am trying to divulge to the Liberian people that the first step in engendering good citizenship is to love Liberia. Begin to love Liberia. Two ways. As individual citizens, we must begin to love our country, but we have a contract with our government to make us love our country. You see that? And how can they make us love our country? It's by providing the basic social services. Irrespective of our status, creed. It is our right, guaranteed by the Constitution. So, the rest of the story is in chapter 2 of that book. Chapter 3 discusses preserving our heritage. This evidence that we're saying, we know what happened here in 1990. 600 about of our compatriots were murdered in cold blood. This place began to be transformed into a national shrine so that it sets the stage for the prevention of the occurrence of that disaster for the next generation. If we don't document it, they're not going to know. We have somewhere called our National Museum in some broad street. What about our museum that is national? It's in our world. We need to change it and give it a national character. There's a place I know I've heard about having been there, I don't want to deceive you, called Tala and Tosso in Grand Cayman County. It came out against our here. I am told that there is a name between those two settlements that separated the indigenous and the settlers. What are we doing with it? We need to transform it, give it a national character. You have a lake in Cape Town. Do we want to see a coastal line for tourism? We have a place the late President Joe was captured in Cape Power. What are we doing with it? Do we want to erect a presidential library there and have documentaries about past presidents? Do we want to do that? So these national questions are asked in that book. And at the end, I'm saying to you, yes, we all have one answer, yes, we can do it. Now we need to start to do it. The unification monument is in Portugal. Does it reflect now that national unification monument? We need to look at it. We need to look at all of this is the execution, beach, part of beach. You can walk there and see the kids playing and see the kids stolen there. There we have some of our patriots executed. Now, what is reflective of those executions when you get there? We need to deconstruct what we have erected in our minds. 
so that we can begin to construct a Liberia that we envisage. Everyone here wants to see a Liberia with our people. Everyone here wants to see a Liberia with skyscrapers. We too want to start seeing our structures hitting the skylines. Yeah. But they're not going to hit the skylines until we can do some strong work with our directors. Right. So those are the things that you're going to read about in the session and that's what I do as And then that work that, that was published in March 2013, last year. And it's on Amazon. You can all copies. Me too, I have to all copies to sell local. Though I have to work in agreement with Amazon, but I have to all copies to sell local. That's why you are here to support my efforts to make sure that we have copies to populate our market centers, our business centers, local. And then uh, the time went by, I challenged myself and said, every March, March of every year, I must produce a book. And as long as God gave me the good health, the strength, and all life, every March, I will produce. Okay. Okay, you can go. 
That's how it was safe. Because I was also laid down as a rebel commander and I needed to be incarcerated for my purpose. My daddy still in jail for one month in a maximum prison. No one there go there. And I was in here out of school. My sisters, one of them sitting right behind me there. Very small at the time. She didn't really understand what was happening at the time. And I was mom who was left in distress. But God is faithful. God is really, really faithful. He's good. God knew our innocence. And God saved us. My daddy was free. We were called to the prison. And we became good friends of the Guinean community. And I graduated from high school. Very proud to be a graduate of a refugee high school. And immediately my father sought to send me to Ghana to go to school, but he never had the resources. Came down to Monrovia to find a means to, to get some job. He got a job with MSF. The very day the job was to take him to Nima County where he was supposed to be a son in Jackie, April 6th. Attack started. He had to run back to me. And I had no option but to go to Zerbor, where I attended the Polytechnic Institute just for a semester. And again, by the grace of God, I obtained two years scholarship from the UN to Western in a junior college in Conakry. Upon completion of my studies, it was tough in Conakry. I want to see the rest of the story. Language barrier and all, because that was a requirement for the studies. The, 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 you did your course in French, in the French language. You sat in a class where no one understood French. The professor only came and spoke for two hours, smoked a cigarette, and walked out. He didn't care as to whether they have foreign students. And many of our colleagues started leaving the program. Really, they left the program and said, Big Shin, and the small shame is better than Big Shin. So they left. And just about the time I was making my mind, my mind to leave, then an intern, an American was assigned to the institution. And when she heard that the high is a student, she was so excited. Immediately she told me and my colleagues to the USIS uh, Center, uh, the United States Information Service Center, and provided us the opportunity to the library and everything where we made our researches. And uh, we had the opportunity to find equivalent, the equivalent, the equivalent of words in French and English. And she also took us to a place called Santé de la Langue Française. It's at the National University in Hungary. The Center for French Studies is established for foreign students where you learn the French language in six months before you admit them into the regular programs in the university. I also enrolled there and did the French language. My French was improved and I did well in my studies. And I scored the required grades by the UN. And then, at the end of the day, I was able to achieve the practice of my studies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the rest of the story.
because of our lack of performing the task. I thought upon myself to say, let me browse through the materials. And because of one reason or another, I did not touch the story of the refugee boy of the day from refugee to prominence. Because I didn't think that would be so pleasant to me. So I decided to take upon this one. And quickly read the introduction, the preface of the day, and pick up the three capital issues, the author of the two archives has lifted time management, nationalism, and heritage. And I don't want to bore you because time management is all about business. <laughs> I would rather be what I would draw on Sunday by a student group to serve as their people speaker. The letter informed me that I was to be there at 2 o'clock on a Sunday so that I would have checked. And after the sermon, left my church about one day, and I got there five minutes to two. And I went and sat in the auditorium, and after 10 minutes, one of the students walked up and said, no, we went at five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to discipline them, I said, okay, I will, I will send my principal all this time to you to deliver it. You have to learn to manage time. I will cut out my engagements to attend your program at your request. So, all of us will have to manage that. The government, the people, all of us. But I'm going to write down to what you're talking about nationalism and maybe look at it from our perspective, which I believe is a challenge for all of us. The typical Liberian man, he was, if he was ever confronted and he's asked about his country, we are thinking, we are reflecting on anything. The response would be for your interpretation and it will allow you to want to speak to him further. Can you say to you, oh, you are from Liberia? Yes, and the next thing is that dirty place. Who oh, are from Liberia? All the officials of the government are thieves. <laughs> and on the other side, those of us who are interested will probably office or officers will say, don't mind the basic people. <laughs> Labyrinth in our own business. Those are the things we say. Those are the kind of things that are embedded in within our spirit. And we think it's wrong. It made mention of the Ghanaians. And I was thrilled the last time.